Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? Uh, you know, I'm not going to complain. Uh, gangland, it's pretty par for the course, if we're being honest. Um, Kyle, it's been a crazy... Uh, it's been a crazy couple of days in Buckeye Nation. Speaking of Kyle. Yeah, speaking of Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, I have to say. You've you've very much been Team Kyle in the discord uh, over the past couple of days, more so than I was expecting. You I feel, feel like a very Kyle based alliance happening um, between you and Mr. McCord. Um I, I feel like maybe you just got something to get off your chest. I feel like I maybe mean, you just have some thoughts on Kyle McCord and I'm just, listen, it's, it's not too often that I just sort of hand the show over to you and tell you to run, but I think I'm going to hand the show over to you and tell, and tell you to run. I mean, did we expect Kyle McCord to be the next Justin Fields? Yes. The next CJ, the next CJ Stroud. Yes. The next Dwayne Haskins. Yes. He's a, he was more highly ranked than two of the people you mentioned in the recruiting rankings. I personally didn't think so. That that, that was just a high, just such a high expectation. From Again, him. he was ranked higher in the recruiting rankings than both Haskins and Stroud. And especially, and especially since we knew what this offensive line. That's a big issue. Um, and so I, I, I think there's so much blame that's being pointed directly at McCord, and I don't think it's completely fair. I agree. Like, was he consistent? Was he consistent? No, no, I'm not going to, I can't stand here and defend McCord about, about being at the elite level that we expect an Ohio state quarterback to be. But, but as a first year starter, it wasn't, wasn't terrible. Like he he didn't have it. He didn't have a, a bad season at all. He had what? I think he was ranked eighth in the country in QBR. Like that's, that's great. That's great. It all, is. All things considered. But like the, it's Ohio state. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's Ryan day's Ohio state. Like, yeah, but, but you're to go back. To go back it's, it's, like, I'm just saying care. the I, offense I is specifically designed have. to pump the numbers of the quarterback. That that's my point. The Ryan day offense is specifically designed to pump quarterback numbers. And and let's not forget care. his, I mean, and we can, we can say the offensive line was bad and it was, but also the yeah, wide receivers are amazing. Yeah. I don't care if you had Dwayne Haskins or, um, or see, or, um, um, Cardio Jones back there. I'm just picking on those two because they're not the most mobile quarterbacks. I don't care if you sure. have either of them in the backfield there. They, they weren't going to be able to make the throws that they've been able to do in their career because, you know, they had time to throw the ball. And and we've seen like when he had time to throw the ball, more often than not, more often than not, he, he, he made throws. He made good mm-hmm. throws. I agree. But, but he, I, I, I just think, I just think the blame, the amount of blame that's going around for the failure that happened throughout the season on the cord is too much. Only lost one game by six points. I'm just before we call the season a failure. Um, well, I mean, I just, I mean, to, I know to, to I get me, it. I get it. Missed the playoffs. Didn't beat Michigan. Didn't win the big 10. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's three big check marks yep. right there. No, no, no. I, I, I get it. But I think, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't like living on a binary of success versus failure like that. Uh, but yeah, six points yeah, away six from points. being number one in the college football playoff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, lost a spot for each point <laughs> as it turns out. Yeah. All right. So getting back on track here. So obviously comic cord, the big, the big headline here departing, heading on over to the transfer portal here. 
a lot, lot of other names here. Uh, I will slowly try to read these off here. Probably the next big name here, Julian Fleming. Uh, I thought that was a little surprising. I was hoping to see him back. I was hoping to see him back one more year. You have a, I wanted him back. Better, you would have a veteran wide receiver coming back to help to help try to mold and it, it's always good having a an older and more veteran uh player in your position to really help mold and help develop the the younger uh players too and i thought fleming could have been that guy for the young wide receiver crew for next year but wish him the best uh, moving forward to wherever he goes fleming's hoping to go have a Jameis williams type season somewhere um, I don't see that happening. I hope I'm wrong. I like Julian Fleming. I hope he goes, has a great season somewhere. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's my, my whole thing, my whole thing with Julian Fleming is I would love to have had him back. Um, he almost left last year. That's true um, too. Yeah. My understanding is is that a sum of money happened to have him not leave. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but so other other players here on the offensive line or the offensive side, Evan Pryor, I know is a fan favorite here at the uh, Sloop Cast. Here, Evan Pryor. Um, transferring out, I can't really blame him. I we we've seen and we know the type of player he can be, the explosiveness he has. Um, but injuries, yeah, man. Injuries, injuries, yeah. Injuries is a yeah. And then the other two off of the offensive line, uh, Vic Cutler and Jacob James, heading to the portal as well. Yeah. Um, Vic Cutler transferred in last year. Um, from all reports, he didn't ever really, well, I don't want to say ever really, but he, he didn't grasp the offense early on. And then he just didn't catch up after that. Um, I, I expect, and I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put anyone in the portal before they go into the portal. We, we don't do that here, but um, have we lost anyone who doesn't have a suitable replacement? Um, we've not lost anyone who I would 100% tell you would have started next year. There are certainly players who could have started next year. Uh, Kyle McCord being one of them, but the fact of the matter is, is that Kyle McCord was not going to be and depending upon which reports you believe and i again and i don't i wasn't there i don't know but depending upon which reports you believe mccord wanted to be told that he was going to be the starter next year or maybe someone around mccord again depending upon which one of these stories are closest to the truth and the coaching staff, Ryan Day, essentially said, you know, we're we're not guaranteeing you a starting spot next year. And Kyle McCord made a decision that he had to make. Um, and that sucks. I would like to have had Kyle McCord back. Uh, I wanted Kyle McCord back, but Kyle McCord wants to start next year and he's going to go somewhere where they're going to let him start next year. And that was not a guarantee at Ohio state. That's just the fact of the matter. Julian Fleming uh, would have started, but that doesn't necessarily mean he would have gotten starting level snaps. Uh, Cutler, James prior. I don't think any of them got, um, competition snaps this year. Um, on the defensive side, I would have liked to have kept Reed Carrico, but I don't think he was going to start. Uh, he wasn't going to start. Um, 
Uh, Amari Abor was not going to start. I don't think Amari Abor was going to start. Uh, even I, I like. I, I feel like. So I mean, I don't want to do. I don't want to do the whole who's 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 leaving, who's going thing, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that on this episode anyway, right? Um, but it is my opinion that JT is leaving. I, I think that's probably pretty safe to say. And I think Jack Sawyer's is a little bit more of a question mark. So are you hearing rumblings of someone who will hurt us? Um, like I don't, I don't expect any big names to enter the transfer portal from this point. Um, if that's what you're asking, I think if someone else leaves to the transfer portal at this point during this window, it'll be because Ohio State brought someone else in and they will then in turn leave, um, which is a thing we'll talk about later. Um, Amari Abor. So, I mean, even I, I think even if Jack Sawyer were to leave, Amari Abor is still like your third defensive end. I I, I think that. Kenyatta Jackson passed him, which I think is why he's leaving. Kenyatta Jackson is a true freshman. Amari Abor is not. Kenyatta Jackson got a lot of competitive snaps this year. That's that's what happens. When a young guy passes an older guy and the uh, and the older guy is talented enough to go play somewhere else, they're going to go play somewhere else. And that's that's Amari Abor. Like he is talented enough to go play somewhere else. So he's going to go do that. Yeah, um, Amari Abor, Reed, you mentioned Ryan Turner, uh, Jair Brown, uh, a pair of defensive backs that's in the portal. As well as well as a, a pair of safeties, uh, Cameron Martinez and Kai Stokes, as well as Park uh, the kicker Parker Lewis. Yeah, and that currently rounds out the the players who are currently in the transfer portal. Yeah, I don't, and I don't expect like any like impactful names. If an impactful name leaves from the portal now. During this window, during the December portal window, it'll be because Ohio State brought someone else in and someone will go, well, there's my replacement. And then they'll hop into the portal. You know what I mean? It, it's it's that's that's the only way I see any other like big names leaving. Honestly, we'll miss Stokes Martinez the most. Um, Stokes and Jair Brown, uh, I think aren't going to greatly impact next year's team. Um, but I would have wanted them to stay. Um, and, and that's, that's part of the problem is that th for the sake of the defense, you kind of looked at those guys as like really impactful depth guys. And then uh, 2025 guys guys who are going to get serious time in 2025, but they didn't want to wait that long. So they're talented enough to play somewhere else. They're going to go play somewhere else. Um, uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. Jihad will play next year. Um, the defensive tackle whose name is floating me from Ole Miss um, we'll play next year. Vic Cutler's gone. Uh, Tywin Malone. Thank you, gangland. Um, they'll play next year. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's too many defensive backs. Like it's four defensive backs. That sucks. Mm -hmm. Um, that it sucks does. a lot. Uh, but the, I mean, part of the reason why that is, is because Ohio State has a very incredible freshman class of defensive backs coming in behind them. Uh, so it does make me feel a bit better. The recruiting class, who we will talk about later in this episode, we are also talking about recruiting a little bit later in this episode, um, I think is incredibly talented in depth and and has, I mean, it doesn't actually has a lot. Of, it actually does not have a ton of depth 
Uh, but I think that the guys who they have and who I think they will finish with are incredibly talented, if not yep. depth. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's who we're looking at going out. Um, so for, for for you Buckeye fans that's looking at this, you see a lot of departures. I know there's a lot of a lot of concerns, like oh, there, there's so many. There are so many so many players leaving what about the brotherhood and blah 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 and all this it's fine it's um, fine i mean alabama last year had 20 20 in the transfer portal it's fine it's fine don't um, don't, don't sweat it out yeah and i don't know people worry about scholarship counts and scholarship counts and then oh don't don't you worry we'll be talking about seton later don't you worry um, but then when the players choose to leave, everyone loses their minds. You know what I mean? Yeah. If be, people want all the players to stay right up until you have to get under 85. Then they start getting their pen out. Jerry, did you post the screenshot that said we should probably aim for 90 from now on? I don't know if I posted a screenshot of that, but that was um, I, something Tony said in his uh, Tony Gerdeman, the goat. Tony Gerdeman said um, in his uh, things, I think things I know things. I, 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 I'm sorry, I forget the exact title. But, yeah, it's one of my favorite things Tony always does. But um, basically the idea that he was putting forth is, is like back in the day of like Jim Trestle, you'd go into like the spring camp with like 83 guys on scholarship so that you had one or two left over to give some walk-ons. And Tony was just sort of asking out loud, you know, what is that number now? And then he went on to just say, I suspect it's more like 90 now because you just know guys are going to leave. That's that's just how modern college football works. So it's just like I said, it's just it's something to keep in mind. Um, All right. Ohio State, as Kyle was talking about before, and I'm not saying Kyle McCord was perfect by any means. I think he's a above average quarterback. But the biggest failure for Ohio State this year is what Kyle and I feared it would be. And we talked about during the entire offseason was the offensive line. Um, it, all, it all starts with that offensive line. I don't care how elite of a running back, elite of wide receivers, quarterback you have. You don't have an offensive line. You don't have an offense. So uh, that's Ohio gotta get, that's got to get fixed right now. Uh literally wrote in the notes right here as the headline for this section the o-line 2024 make or break for justin fry yeah uh hinsman to the portal we don't put guys into the portal on their behalf we never ever do that i will say this i was you know what i was saying before about like well, the only way I see like a, a guy leaving is if they bring in the guy who might be their replacement. And Ohio State will be pursuing Zeke Correll, a Notre Dame center. Um, but, you know, you, you what if he comes in? Well, there is a guard spot open and one of those two guys could be bumped to guard, right? Totally plausible. Um, let's, uh, so yeah, Ohio state will pursue the portal to improve the offensive line day and fry, uh, said, uh, plainly several times, uh, during the course of this year that they didn't like even trust their backups. Like their five guys were their five guys. And that's, that's unacceptable, especially considering the, the five guys, quite frankly, underperformed, um, you know, you had no competition. You had no depth. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and 
make a bold prediction here. It's not that bold. Uh, despite the fact that only Matt Jones is out of eligibility and will be leaving, um, he's not going to be the only change to the starting lineup. Um, not not at all. Uh, you you could see. I th- I think it's realistic to say. You might have like one guy playing in the same spot that they were playing in last year. I think is if, if I was if I was going to make this into an actual bold prediction, I would say like one potential. If Don, uh, Donovan's coming back, um, I'd be shocked if Donovan Jackson left. Uh, he quite frankly didn't have a good year. Uh, he didn't put anything on tape that's gonna that's gonna impress the NFL scouts, quite frankly. Yeah, and it's hard when you're not getting a ton of help around you. Um, he's the best lineman in a bad room. Yeah. maybe. Um, so I think like the question for like a guy like Donovan Jackson becomes like, was he being elevated by the guys around him last year or did not having any support around him this year cause him to struggle? Um, and we, I, I, I'm not going to pretend like I know the answer to that. Cause I don't. Um, so yeah, I, I would say like either Jackson or Hinsman might still be in the same spot they were last year. And that might be it. Um, we will talk about Jordan Seaton and the likelihood. Yes or no, that he'll be joining the team a little bit later in the show. Um, but if you don't know, Ohio State hosted this past weekend a young man by the name of Jordan Seaton, who is, by the opinion of some, the best offensive lineman in the 2024 recruiting class. Uh, and again, without getting into like a ton of details, I'll say the possibility is very, very real. Uh, it's not me saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying that there is a very good possibility. And I will say that Jordan Seaton. Oh, Stuart, you got to slow down for me, buddy. I can only talk about one guy at a time. Um, Jordan Seaton is that guy. I I think he is good enough. Uh, will Fong did not say that. I read the Will Fong article. Yeah, he did not. He did not say that. He has not placed a crystal ball. I read the article. He did not say that. Learn to read. Um, are we going after the Notre Dame dude? I just talked about Zeke Carell, the Notre Dame dude. Um, the. I was late. <laughs> uh, Jordan Seaton, I think, is a very real possibility for Ohio State. Um And I'll also say this. um, I I think it's going to be crazy. I I, I don't know. Like, I think there's a lot of teams that want this guy, mostly Ohio State and Tennessee. And I think that, like, there's a legitimate, like, bidding war that could take place to get Jordan Seaton on campus. And I'll say that Jordan Seaton could start immediately for Ohio State. Um, Will he? Maybe. Maybe could he? Yes, he would have this year. I'll tell you that. I think Jordan Seaton is starting. If if you could like rewind, um, you think he would have started on this on this on last year's offensive line, um, and now it might be a Paris Jackson Jr. situation where he starts at guard as a freshman and then bumps out the tackle. Um. Paris Jack, what I say? Did I misspeak? Oh, okay. Paris Johnson Jr. Excuse me. A lot of names. Um, I think it could be a situation like that. 
Uh, I think it just sort of depends upon who else you bring in. A typical Sloopcast, yes. So we look at the transfer portal. Kyle, who's out there in the transfer portal that Ohio State could be bringing in? Lots of names. <laughs> but, but who specifically is Ohio State targeting at this point that we know of? Um, I think I think some names to keep an eye out for. Uh, Carter Smith, the, yep. the tackle out in Indiana, I think is a name to keep an eye out. We mentioned, I know we've mentioned this name and part of a recruiting uh, episodes years ago. Zeke Correll yep. from Notre Dame. That's, that's another name that I think Ohio State would look after. And, oh, let's go back to Indiana. And the 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 guard of Matthew Bedford as well, too. Um, it should be noted that both Smith and Bedford again left Indiana. Um, Indiana has been devastated by the transfer portal. They did a whole coaching swap, and especially on the offensive side of the ball, their their team's in the portal at this point. Um both Carter Smith and Matthew Bedford are originally Ohio kids. They these are these are Ohio high school athletes. Um I'll throw a fourth I'll throw a fourth name out here, Jared. I mean, I, I I'm sticking to I'm sticking to yeah, names I, I know Ohio State's looking at, but if you want to throw a name out there, throw a name out there. I'll, I'll throw this here because he had Ohio State as um one of his top seven in um when he made his decision. Uh seven, huh? No. LT <laughs> Overton. LT Overton. I mean, that'd be a nice pickup. I mean, that'd be a great pickup. The uh the the really good offensive lineman out of uh Texas AM. Him and his brother um both transferring out of AM. That's how it works at Texas AM. You go there for one year, you get your bag, and then you then you leave. Any Walter Nolan smoke um, as far as Ohio State goes? No, like I'm I'm sure they're trying, but I'm sure every team in the country is trying. Yeah, uh, that's that that's my assessment on that situation. Like. Walter Nolan can go play football anywhere in the country he wants. Uh, that's that's how that's how that works. If you're Walter Nolan. <clears throat> So, like I said, I'm I'm sure they're trying, um, but I have I have no faith. I have no knowledge or faith on anything happening for Ohio State specifically in that situation. Um, you'll get locked out of a promised apartment in Miami. Yeah, well, um, yeah. So, I mean. Those are, I would say, three for sure names. When I say for sure, I mean, like, I think Ohio, Ohio State is pursuing them. Um, that does yeah. not necessarily mean that they want to come to Ohio State or that after doing some evaluation that Ohio State will choose that they want them. Um, you know, there's there's an evaluation process in both directions there. I think Carter Smith would be a great addition to Ohio State and I would say is a likely-ish addition to Ohio State. Um, I, I think he, uh, I like I said, he's an Ohio kid, grew up in Ohio, wanted to play for Ohio State. Um, Ohio State apparently screwed up their eval on him, which is why we changed offensive line coaches. Because he is pretty good and he's pretty young. He could play for up to three years for Ohio State. Um, Zeke Carell, um, I, I think, is a I, I think is a great player. He's immediate plug and play. I, I don't have a good feel as far as Ohio State's chances there. Um, and Matthew Bedford, I, I think, is a um He's a guy who they'll need to do some eval on and decide if he has a, you know, Ohio State level future or not. Um, uh, anything else on the offensive line front, Kyle? Um, no, um, I want to clarify. I meant um, that LT was a defensive line, not offensive line. I apologize for that. Um, okay. I think I think the I think the biggest I think the biggest question now because it's the big topic right now. It's 
it's the quarterback. Is Ryan Day happy with who he has for next year? He, he has just just one more quick on the offensive line, it. Kyle, before we walk away from it. I just want to say I expect one to two guys if they get Seaton. If they don't get Seaton, it could be three. But I, I still say one to I would say I would say two. I'll just say two. I'll say I expect two offensive linemen. Um, but again, whether or not Seaton decides to come to Ohio State could, uh, will affect how many offensive linemen they bring in. All right, Kyle, quarterback. Sorry about that. So is Ryan Day happy with the three he has right now? Brown, uh, Brown, Keynes, Holes, and Noland. Uh, is he is he is he happy with those three, or is he going to go look for another one year quarterback uh, for next year? And and I think I think there's a there's there's quite a few I think there's quite a few names out there that Haas State would be interested in. Uh, I think the name Cameron Ward, the yeah. uh, quarterback out of Washington State, is is the hot name right now. Riley Leonard, the quarterback from Duke, is another that's been thrown around, as well as a uh, Will Howard, the quarterback out of Kansas State. I think are probably the three quarterbacks that I think Ohio State would pick from if if they were to come to Ohio State. Yeah, um, I, and and probably in that order, um, there is a lot of smoke around Cameron Ward in Ohio State right now. I would say it's very far from a done deal. Um, what about the McCord kid? Heard he was top 10. I don't know what top 10 means. I don't He wasn't top 10 overall, and he was much higher than top 10 quarterback. He's like a top five quarterback. Um, oh, in the QBR, my bad. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, stats are not evaluation. Stats are not evaluation. <laughs> Don't be snippy. That was your guy. <laughs> yeah, Stuart. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Not mine. Oh, I got screenshots. Don't make me post the screenshots, Stuart. Um, that was 100% your guy. He knows it too. Um, yeah. And always, all, all these guys are rentals. I'll say that. Um, these guys would come in and play for a year. Um, which I think is like a lot of, you know, people are talking, they, they, they see other big names out there in the quarterback portal and oh, I say it's straight up, not going to go get a young guy. They're just they're not going to do that. They're they're not going to scare off uh, Kleinholtz and they're not going to scare off Nolan. Um, they're they're not they're not going to do that. So you you bring in like a one year quarterback who is going to compete for the job. Let me be very clear about something. They will compete for the job. Uh, Notre Dame brought in a veteran quarterback to compete for the job. And then they ended up going with the young guy instead. And the older guy went back to Notre Dame and uh, is, is going to be playing lacrosse now. That's how that went for him. Um, they'll bring in a guy and that guy will not be guaranteed a starting spot. He will compete with Devin Brown and Lincoln Kleinholtz for the job. And no, I, I don't think it'll be Aaron Nolan. Um, But that's that's how I see the quarterback situation. Kleinholtz, Kleinholtz. I know I, I I throw an unnecessary L in there. I I, I know I do that. Keenholtz. Ah, Germans and their names. Germans and their names. Keenholtz. I know I know a guy who has a German name and it's just totally mispronounced. Yep. Right, Kyle. Anyway, well, anybody, anybody else we're looking that Ohio State's looking at here, or any other position that we should be keeping an eye out for? Uh, just generally, at just take a look at the defense. Um, lose a lot of guys in the transfer portal, losing a lot of guys to the draft. Like there's just there's going to be a lot of missing guys from the defense. 
So they're, they will be seeking some depth in the transfer portal. I would say mostly, um, I, I would say mostly seeking depth in the transfer portal. I would say maybe the one exception to that is if they can get like, uh, like a, an impactful defensive tackle. Um, I, I expect Tylee to leave. Um, uh, we don't know about Hall. We don't know about Sawyer. Um, but we. Uh, KVA could easily flip. I I don't think so. I, I maybe I'm not saying no. Uh, but I don't have him in, in my mock, which I will reveal the mock later uh jalen uh zach says yeah jalen i think is gone and um ty leak i think is gone jt jt and ty leak i think are gone i don't know about hall i don't know about sawyer hall i'm like 50 50 on sawyer i think is coming back but i don't know um I don't expect Burke to come back, but th these are all guesses for the record. I don't, I don't know anything. Um, I, I expect most, unless you get like an impactful defensive tackle to like replace Ty leak. Um, I don't ex necessarily expect Ohio state to bring in starters for the defense. I do expect them to bring in like someone to replace Kai Stokes. Someone to replace Reed Carrico, uh, who, like I said at the beginning of the show, I didn't expect to start anyway. Uh, year of Curry. Yeah. Hey, did you know Kyle McCord legit had a public Discord server? He only sent like eight messages in it. I, I, well, I can tell you, I honestly did not know that. Um, so yeah, uh, one guy who they've already, uh, talked to Ty Hamilton, isn't this Ty, ha Ty Hamilton still has a year, right? I'm so bad at tracking. I'm so bad at tracking eligibility now. Yeah. He has uh, because of 2020. He, one he does year. have a year left. Um, yeah, I, I think Ty Hamilton's an incredibly solid player. I don't think he's a disruptive player. Um, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think they're going to go get, I think you bring in, I think you bring in a defensive tackle. If that defensive tackle is going to be like an impactful player. Yeah. I, I keep trying to talk about the mid Tennessee state guy, but y'all keep distracting me. <laughs> uh, Marley cook is his name. Um, he uh, will visit. He will visit. Um, I think he's already been offered a scholarship at Ohio State. Um, who is the guy from the Ivy League? Uh, there's a there's a, a guy from Harvard. I think he's I think people are kind of sending him to Rutgers already, though. I'm, I, I don't know a ton. I don't have a ton of insight there. Um, Again, I uh, supposed to be legit. Um, I, I I don't know. Uh, I think Ohio State uh, were, were pursuing Marley Cook very quickly. I'll say that. Like, I feel like they targeted in on him as their guy um, for whatever reason. I don't know, but they they definitely like they they seem to just go straight after Marley Cook. They they apparently did some eval and like what they saw there. Um. But yeah, like I said, like, you know, they'll pick up a defensive back. They'll pick up a linebacker in the portal, but I don't expect any of those guys to be like big money, high impact guys. That that That's my. I think it's mostly going to get some some depth in the portal as far as the defense is concerned. Thor Griffith, that sounds like a guy who went to Harvard. I'm just going to say that. 
All right, Kyle. Um, anything else transfer portal wise? Still young. I mean, it's still yeah. <laughs> so there's still a lot of time. Still a lot of time here, but, but yeah, I I don't really. When it when it surprised me if there was another name or two from Ohio State that may may put their name into the transfer portal, but but I, I don't expect another. Listen, large bunch to come in to come in. I'm just saying if like if Ohio State does get in a if, let, let's just say Ohio State brings in Carter Smith and let's say that Ohio State brings in Jordan Seaton. Those are two impactful offensive linemen who are probably going to start one way or another next year. Right. So you add those two guys in. Then you have. Um, I can't do names tonight. Um, yeah, I'm just saying like <laughs> cheeks. Yes, thank you, cheeks. Uh, I think my Montgomery is the name I was searching for. I think Montgomery moving into his second year is probably going to work his way into the starting lineup. So I'm just saying between Montgomery aging into the offensive line, adding Carter Smith, potentially adding Jordan Seaton in this scenario, right? Um, okay. You have one offensive lineman leaving and here are three new starters. Do the math guys will jump into the portal in that scenario, which is a somewhat likely scenario. Guys are going to jump into the portal. Starting with, I'm not naming names. I don't put guys into the portal for them. And it, it might be the, some of the starters. It might be depth guys. I think there's a lot of depth guys who have not panned out again. And screenshots of your, of of my lie you mean of your lie all right let's uh let's jump into recruiting uh ohio state lost justin scott somewhat recently that sucks yep there's there's no other way of saying it that sucks um his commitment always kind of felt like a surprise it always kind of felt like an out of nowhere sort of surprise and then his flip kind of felt like a out of nowhere sort of surprise. Did we lose him or did Miami buy him? I mean, yes, it's it's both. It's both. Uh, Miami and Texas A&M um, have a lot of money that they throw around and guys will go there for a year. Then they'll leave. It, we, we've seen it happen the past couple of years. They buy a recruiting class, but it doesn't buy them. It wins. Um. Don't want him. He'll be in the portal soon enough. I, I mean, I still want him. I'm not I'm not prideful like that. If he's like, hey, everyone, I got my bag in Miami for a year and I'm ready to come to Ohio State now. I'd be like, come on in, buddy. I don't care. Um, There's a lot of talk and this talk has been around for months. Rule nine. Exactly. Austin. Rule nine. Click talent. Worry about everything else later. Um. As far as uh, where was I? Um, oh, yeah. Jeremiah Smith. I I know the buzz is out there. I know everyone's worried about it. I know we've been we've been. Oh, my God. Is Jeremiah Smith come? Uh, we've been having this conversation for months. And I know like in the wake of the Jeremiah Smith or excuse me, of the Justin Scott flip that just sort of heightens everyone's what happens if Florida State or Miami shows up with a bag. He's a he's a highly talented skill guy from Miami or not from Miami, from Florida. Um, what happens when a, and I, I, I still have him in the class. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not I'm not telling you 100 percent that he's staying that he's going to stay in this class because I don't know a hundred percent. I don't know that he knows a hundred percent. I am telling you, I'm keeping him in my mock class. That's what I'm telling you. And that's not out of me wanting that to be true. That's me honestly believing it. He's visiting FSU this week. Yes, he is. And they will offer him a bag. An absolute 
giant bank bag with a green dollar sign written on the side of it. And you hope that he is still Ohio State's wide receiver after that. I think he will be. Do I know he will be? No. I think he will be. You just got to. Like, uh, you know, you may put a number to it. I say like 80 percent. I, I there's an 80 percent chance, in my opinion, that's just my opinion and nothing else that he remains in the Ohio State recruiting class. Does that leave a 20 percent left over? Hey, you're good at math. Um, It does. It's all right. He, he either either stays in the class or he doesn't. I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. Yeah. Um, that's it on flip watch. Mm-hmm. Um, really important upcoming week. We're going to release this on the seventh. We've been talking a lot about Jordan, Jordan Seton, Jordan Seton's committing on the day this comes out. If you're mm-hmm. listening to this the day after it comes out, or if you're listening to this later in the day, from when this comes out, you might already know if Jordan Seaton's coming to Ohio State or not. Um, although, given the bidding war that's taking place, I wouldn't necessarily be sure that the place he chooses on the seventh is where he ends up on National Signing Day, because there's that much money apparently flying around. Uh, I know it's old school thinking, but I want players who want to play here. I want players who want to play here too. But if they go spend a year in Miami first to get a large bank bag full of money, then go. You 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 can't judge. If you don't know someone's life, you can't judge their financial decisions. He might want to play here, but he's just going to go there for a year or two to collect money. It doesn't mean he doesn't want to play here. If you were depending upon the financial situation you come from, it just might not even be a realistic choice for you. Like you just have to missing out on Ohio state development. (laughs) Yeah. But like, you could also blow your ACL out. And if you have a chance to get life changing money tomorrow, you get life changing money tomorrow. Again, especially depending upon the background that a player may or may not be coming from. All right, we're, we're running low on time and I need to get this mock class out before we do that. Important dates, 7th, Jordan Seaton um, will be committing uh, the this weekend. Um, three very important visitors coming to Columbus. Defensive tackle Carlin Jones, a uh, defensive tackle uh, who recently uh, decommitted from Nebraska. Good opportunity there for Ohio State to finish out there or, you know, to to replace to replace Justin Scott. Um, Safety Coy Perich. And am I mispronouncing that? Almost certainly. Uh, He is a late rising, um, a late rising safety like uh, he kind of just. Is it Parrish? Is it pronounced? It's not spelled Parrish. I'll tell you, it's not it's not spelled parish. It might be pronounced parish. It's not spelled parish, not in the traditional sense anyway. Um, again, uh, he's a guy. Uh, Minnesota killed their eval on 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 this guy. He totally late rising uh, up the recruiting boards guy. Um, would be a huge get for Ohio state would be an app. You know, Ohio state had a bunch of safeties that they were looking at at one point and you know, KJ Bolden, um, Woodyard guys who didn't pan out. Um, this, uh, pair itch pair itch. All right. Y- y'all, y'all are giving me different. Y'all are giving me different pronunciations in the spelling. What are in the chat? What, what am I supposed to do? Um, 
Point is, huge pickup for Ohio State. Like, it's not like KJ Bolden great, but it's almost that good. Um, and then a guy they've been pursuing for a long time, uh, defensive end Ernest Will uh, Willer will also be uh, visiting this weekend. I think you can lock him down. I think you can finish that one off too. I think all three of these guys are, there's not an H anywhere in that name. I promise. There's not, <laughs> y'all are just screwing with me at this point. Um, I think all three of these guys could end up in the recruiting class. I feel very good about that. Um, and to finish out the mock class, I'm not going to read out all the names to you for the guys who are already in the in the class. You can look that up yourself. I'm just going to tell you who I'm adding to the class. These are the players I am adding to the recruiting class. And again, I'm not subtracting anyone, I'm not taking Jeremiah Smith out. I'm not taking anyone out of the class. Um, so here are the guys I'm adding. I'm adding Chance Robinson, a wide receiver who's currently committed to Miami. Um, I, I think, I think, uh, decent chance there for Ohio state. I do have Jordan Seaton in the class. I, am I saying it's absolutely going to happen? No. Am I wish casting a bit? Maybe, but I think Ohio state has as good a chance as anybody else. I think it's like 40% Ohio state, 40%. Tennessee, 20% the field. It might be like 45, 45, 10, maybe. Anyway, that, that's just me throwing numbers out there. Like it's pretty even with Tennessee, uh, but don't count out Bama. Don't count out Oregon. There, there's other guys in, 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 in play. Um, both teams are reaching deep into the bag for this one. I'm telling you yet, there's a bidding war happening. Um, Carlin Jones, uh, I'm adding to this recruiting class. I already talked about Car uh, Carlin Jones. Um, I am adding, along with Willer, I'm adding a Maris Williams, who is currently committed to Florida, and uh, Parrish, the safety from, uh, who's currently committed to Minnesota, who we've already talked about. So those are the guys I'm adding to the class. So that's one, two, three, four, five additional players to the class. Once again, Parrish, Willer, Williams, Jones, Seton, and Robinson. That was actually six. All right. Th that's our final. No, not final. We'll we'll do another one before the final final. That's our that's our official early signing day mock class. KVA, I'm I'm not projecting KVA in. I am not I am not projecting him in at this time. Unfortunately, I would I think Ohio State. I think I would love for them to get a third linebacker. Ohio, I, but um, Kerlick said it's a chance. I I agree. I think it's a chance. I'm not saying absolutely not going to happen. I'm saying the chances aren't high enough for me to put him in my mock class at this time. That's that's where I'm sitting. All right, Kyle, I'm done talking. I'm tired. Um, I want to uh, uh, Christmas season is upon us. Everyone check out merch.thesloopcast.com for a bunch of um, podcast merch that is in the realm of kind of Ohio State stuff, but uh, isn't legally speaking. Legally speaking, it's not. Before the lawyers get sent after our merch shop again. Yeah. Try and toe the line a bit. Get it before Ohio State takes it. That's that's the official motto of the Sloopcast merch store. Get it before Ohio State takes it. Um, and then if you don't want podcast merch, you can go to 7071. That's 7071 dot the sloopcast.com where we just have like a bunch of Ohio based apparel um that isn't necessarily um not it's just it's not podcast merch it's just Ohio based apparel 
Um, it, but it's just it's a it's a different avenue for you to support the podcast, buy a T-shirt. But like, you know, you don't want to wear podcast merch, which I get. I understand. So uh, those are two ways to support the podcast. You can also support us on Patreon, Patreon dot the sloopcast.com and if you want to advertise on the podcast um sloopcast at gmail.com kyle do you anything kyle's corner uh love the shirt you're wearing jared thanks i all i, f- I was gonna turn the lights yellow and i forgot i forgot to, i was gonna i was gonna do yellow lights and i forgot columbus crew columbus Camilla's crew cup MLS Cup this weekend. Yeah, it's a is a big one. What what the, the hell, hell Austin? Austin, what are you doing? Austin, just, just out there being in Austin, it's always doing. No, I, I'm sorry, you're fired. You're fired, Austin. Sorry. Where's? Let's see what what kind of. Um, Oh, he's a, he's a we'll have to invent a role for him. We'll have to we'll have to we'll have to invent a rule a role for him. Crew about to bring happiness to Ohio. You're damn right. Damn right. Bring that that third championship home here. I have to say, I'm a bit surprised. I wasn't expecting this. But uh they yeah, surged. Especially, especially with they, some of the key departures. Yeah. But they they went on run. They got, yeah, they got peaking hot, at the right time. Hot when hot at the perfect time here. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, especially in professional sports, where the margins are so slim between teams, like you know, it's it's a thing I like to remind NFL people: like, no one in the NFL sucks. Everyone in the NFL is great. Um, I don't know if I can say that about MLS soccer, if I'm being honest, but, (laughs) um, in professional sports, the, the differences between teams are so slim that like just being healthy at the right time or catching a hot streak at the right time is sometimes the, that's sometimes just what it takes to win a championship for better or worse. All right, Kyle, do you have anything else in the in Kyle's corner or is it time to move on? No, I think that I think that's that's the big thing here. Go go watch the crew. I th- I th- believe you can watch them actually on TV for a change, not just on Apple TV. What a horrible mistake that was. Why would you why would you reduce the visibility of your sport like that? <sighs> anyway, um yeah, so that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by the Cloud Nothings. They're a band out of Cleveland. Yeah, it's on Fox. On Fox at four o'clock. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it, the idea was floated in the Discord server. Well, I, I probably shouldn't advertise that. I'll just say social screen, because if I just say social screen, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. But that idea has been floated. And Kyle, how do you feel? If I can make it, I will, I'll do it. I was hoping for a little bit more of a. It's like you have a it's like you have a sub one year old in the house or something. and Something could come up. I know, I, I know right? All right. Uh, that's it. That's the end of today's show. Once again, uh, band is uh, the cloud nothings. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the cloud nothings.